I'll fight fire with fire because this election is too important for me to back off. Yeah. So I'm very happy to have our positive argument, but I will absolutely be fighting fire <laughs> with fire because um, I have done everything I can to change this Labour Party in four short years and I've shown a ruthlessness and a determination to do so. Keir Starmer, thank you for having us. Thank you for having me on. I'd like to start with health because the Times has launched its health commission. It's a huge piece of work. People care you know, very, very deeply about it. And one of the biggest proposals is this idea that patients should own their own data. It should follow them around the hospital system. Is that something that Labour could get on board with? Absolutely. We've already said that we want an app or a passport, that sort of idea, that contains the medical information about a patient, their records, um, their prescriptions but also has the ability to sort of have incoming about hospital capacity, what's going on in the area. So yes, we want to get behind this proposal. We've already put out a version of it ourselves, and it really matters. Mm -hmm. And I'll just give you one example of that that really struck in my mind. Um, just a few weeks ago, I was at Alderhay, yeah. at the Children's Hospital um, up in the Northwest. It is fantastic. You've mm -hmm. got the most committed NHS staff, and I went on to the heart surgery ward for babies. <laughs> this is um, humbling to yeah. see what they're able to do. It almost seems impossible to do heart surgery on a baby that size. And I was with the parents of one of the boys who's had extensive opera heart operations. And they told me their story about what had happened to their son, the procedures he'd mm. been through. And as they told me, you could see them welling up. It was emotion. an emotional journey yeah. for them, even to tell me what was happening. And then um, they said to me, and we have to go through this every time mm. we go to a different hospital. They were older, hey? Yeah. They had originally been at Blackpool, Blackburn, I'm sorry. Um, and so, because the records weren't stored in one place, they weren't shared, you mm. didn't have this data, you didn't have a passport or app, they were having to go through not only the waste of time, saying the same thing mm -hmm. about what had happened to their son. But the emotional strain it was put, it was for them to go through what he'd been through, you know, what the symptoms were, how he got to the state yeah. in the first place, was a really hard story to tell. Mm -hmm. And so I'm absolutely up for this. I think it's a very important reform that we may need to make. For us, it will be a part of a package of reforms because um, the NHS, um, you know, is on its knees under this government. Mm -hmm. um, and it is unforgivable to take the NHS and 14 years later deliver a worse NHS to the country than when you inherited yeah. it under this government. We will have to pick it up, um, but just putting it back on its feet I don't think is enough. We're going to have to do reform, yeah. real reform. Only Labour can do this. Um, the Tor all the Tories can do is walk around and try to patch up the system. Yeah. Only Labour can reform. We will do big reform um, to make sure that we're not just looking at the history of the NHS, you know, proudly, 75 plus years, but putting it in a position for the next 75 years. It won't and be easy though. And, and one of the big recommendations of this report is that the health service needs to move to talk more about prevention, that that's really the key to this. Uh, another of the recommendations is on obesity. And I know that you've talked at length about dentistry, one of the you know, really important things to get right. Would Labour consider banning cartoons on junk food, essentially for children. I mean, there's a lot of children's food that's advertised with cartoons. We have to get to grips with advertising. Um, absolutely have to get to grips um, with it because obesity is a real problem. But the broad point you make about preventative model mm -hmm. is hugely important because for us, picking the NHS up and putting it on its feet, which we will have to do and we will do, is not enough. We need to change the model so that it's fit for the future. That means preventative, it means much more local mm -hmm. to people, so it's not just go to your GP yeah. or go to A&E, um, and it means much more use of AI and tech. On preventative, just um, I think I saw from the Commission's draft report already um, what they have to say about dentistry, which is really a, you know, important, important stuff. Yeah. I have to say, I was shocked, really shocked, and I know politicians say that all the time, when I learned that the most common cause for six to ten-year-olds to go to a hospital is to have their teeth taken out because they're decaying. I was shocked, and when I was in Alderhay, I was in awe at what they were doing, obviously in the mm. heart surgery, but I was really angry that in that hospital, yeah. um, the commonest cause for children coming in, young children, 
is to have the teeth taken so out. So would you be brave enough to introduce a sugar tax then? Because that would be one of the best ways to solve, as you say, a problem that made you very angry. Well, I don't think sugar tax is the way forward. I do think advertising is the way forward. I do think on so dentistry... So a cartoon ban, potentially. I, th I think on, on dentistry in particular, what we've um, said is there should be supervised uh, toothbrushing, which could be done yep. at school in the breakfast clubs that we want to set up. Now, that provoked a backlash of people saying, surely that's the job of the yeah. parents. And of course, the first duty of the parent is to, we've all done it, I've got mm. two children, is to get the teeth clean. But the price of it not being done shouldn't be yeah. a six, seven, eight-year-old losing their teeth or the brilliant staff at Alderhey spending their time pulling teeth out why instead of the sugar? other things why they could do. Why not look at sugar then? Well, I think we've got to take this in stages. We've got um, you know, what we want to do in breakfast clubs. We've got what we want to do on advertising. But the preventative model goes, you know, this has to be a key principle of a reformed yeah. Yeah. NHS. So maybe to cartoons you might look at it, but not to sugar tax. We're not looking at sugar tax. Okay. I want to move on to talk about something else, which is it's, it's dominating the headlines. It's immigration, but it's specific to what happened in Clapham. There are a lot of people now questioning why people who come to this country are allowed to convert to Christianity, and that is a reason to allow them to stay. You will know. I know your background. You know it's not the first time this has happened with someone who went on to commit a crime. Would Labour look at this? Oh, of course we've got to look at it. Absolutely got to look at it. Um, but, you know, let's not beat about the bush. This government has completely lost control on all fronts when it comes to immigration and asylum. Mm -hmm. um, the Prime Minister talks about stopping the boats, but he hasn't stopped the boats. Um, and the only way to get to grips with what's happening with the boats is to smash the gangs that are running this in the first yeah. place. I feel very strongly about this. But on I, this particular, in this particular case, he came in in the back of a lorry, he was refused on two occasions, and then this gentleman was given asylum on the third occasion because he converted. So that's something that Labour would look at, whether or not that's being abused, because there's some real concern that it is. Well, if any abuse of the system needs to be looked at. I don't think we should have any truck with this. Okay. Any abuse of the system needs to be looked at. But we do have to, um, you know, wherever you look, we've obviously been discussing the health service, um, immigration, asylum, everything this government has touched in the last 14 years has ended up broken. And that's why I think, you know, as we go in, I mean, 2024 election year, as we go into that election year, um, it is, you know, undoubtedly the mood across the country that we need change. Nobody mm -hmm. feels better off now than they did 14 years ago. Nobody thinks anything's working better. Nobody thinks that this failed government can provide the change. Labour has changed. Nobody um, argues when I say we are a fundamentally different party to the party that fought the election yeah. in 2019. Well, and me, we've got a plan to change the Let me bring you to that. Because we asked a group of people, you have asked a group of people for, for Times Radio, a range of questions. Things like who would be best in a crisis, for example, who keeps their promises. And we gave them a choice of you or Rishi Sunak, uh, the two choices. In every single one of those nine questions, voters said neither of you. They didn't want either of you. Does that worry you? Look, I uh, go across the country talking to people day in, day out. They desperately want change. They want to know, do I get it? Do I understand what they're going through? Whether it's the parents in older hay heart mm -hmm. surgery, whether it's the many people who can't pay their bills. Do you get it? Have you got a plan to do something mm -hmm. about it? And, you know, we can go round and round in circles with this poll and that poll and this question says that, that question says this. The best way is to have the poll of polls. But let's isn't, have it, a general, isn't it about trust? Isn't it actually election. about trust? Isn't it, isn't it bigger than that? It's about that people feel that actually when they look at Westminster, they, they, don't, they don't feel they can trust any of you. Uh, just two things about that. Firstly, I do think that for the government now to just cling on for as long as possible in mm -hmm. 2024, when the country is crying out for change. You talk about polls, every poll I've seen says most people want an election earlier yep. rather than later. Well, uh, they don't say that if they want things to stay as they are. They say that because they want change. On your question of trust, because I do think this is a really important mm -hmm. question, I think what has been broken in the last 14 years under this government are two things. And these are the biggest hurdles, I think, in politics at the moment. Um, the first is those group of individuals say, I like what you're saying, Keir, what Labour is saying, but I just don't think it's possible to fix things anymore mm -hmm. because things are so broken. Yeah. The second group, which you touch on, is the group that say, I like what you're saying, but I've lost trust in politics. I think... Lost trust in you, we, maybe. We've got to, well, we've got to... Look, we've been in opposition. It, you know, if you look at what Boris Johnson... Um, did to yeah. you know trust in politics? It was huge, but you can see it. I mean, the 
self-entitlement of this um, government by elections, because mm -hmm. people who were elected in as MPs, Tory MPs, yeah. thought they should have get peerages, didn't get a peerage, and so we've had a by-election. That is, destroys trust. Is now, scaling we back your manifesto the way to deal with that, though? Because that, that feels to a lot of people like you're just, it's not very ambitious, it's not hopeful enough. Well, uh, two things. On restoring trust, I do want and hope the election to be a reset moment where we can reset mm -hmm. trust with um, proper understanding, properly enforced of the behaviour to be expected of politicians, changing what it means to be a politician. Mm -hmm. po politics should be about service, not self-entitlement, about but service. But on that specific that point about really scaling important. back, is it the right time to scale back when the country is looking at all of you and saying, we're not fussed? Um, well, we're not scaling back. I set out last year five big missions mm -hmm. for an incoming Labour government, um, a decade of national renewal. So that's a project for five or ten years, national renewal, um, reforming our NHS for the future. That's not a small project. Um, fastest or highest sustained growth in the yep. G7 where living standards rise across the whole of the country. That's not a small project. These are very big projects for the country. They're huge. But you also promised Lord's reform. And when you announced that you would do that, you said you were doing it to instill trust in politics. You said that it was the only way to get people to understand that the system had changed. And now you are scaling that well, back. Um, I'm very concerned that we're going to inherit a very broken system. The economy is busted. Public services are busted. Trust is busted. And therefore, we've got to... Um, pick things up and then take our country to a better place. That's a big thing to have to do. The reason I set out five missions is because I think the only way that can be done is if you've got a purpose-driven government. A government that says that's where we're trying to get to. We're not going to be blown off course mm -hmm. by side winds. I picked five missions because I thought they were the most important transformation yeah. of the country. But you see, but I, no, I, just, just to me, because yeah. it is really important to, because mm -hmm. of the missions. That yeah. means that we have to be utterly focused on the five missions. So is everything outside of those missions, else. is everything outside of those missions, it, it could be watered down or scaled back? No, but what I am saying is we've got to be able to prioritise in government because of the difficult okay. circumstances we'll inherit. I've set out my five key priorities and I'm not going to be knocked off um, course. Yeah. And I've said uh, a number of times um, publicly in my conference speech, etc., um, there will be good Labour things that we won't be able to yes. do as quickly as we'd like to I need do to ask because you we need to prioritise. I need to ask you something specific. You've been forced to talk a lot about this £28 billion investment. It's your green investment policy. We know there has been a very public debate about that number. Would you like to, to set it out today, level with people today? What is going on with, with that policy? Well, again, start with the five missions. What are the five things we want to achieve in government? Because um, you can only understand the investment argument um, by understanding that. Um, we want to have clean power by 2030. That's, a mass that's one of the missions. It's difficult to achieve. What that means is a race towards renewables gives us lower bills, mm -hmm. energy security, so Putin can't put his boot on our throat, and it allows us to be in the race for the next generation of jobs, hugely important, and jobs that will be measured in decades, mm -hmm. not days. In order to get there, we will need a number of things, um, we're going to have to get to grips with the tough decisions on planning because planning gets in the way um, of that target. Um, we're going to have to have a proper industrial strategy with our partners. We're going to have to deal with the grid, which is far too mm -hmm. slow connecting up. And we're going to need investment. That's where the 28 billion comes in, that investment that's desperately needed for that um, mission. And I've been unwavering in relation to the mission, clean power by 2030. And I keep getting challenges from people saying, you're moving the date back. That mission um, of clean power by 2030, I haven't moved that date back at all. It's very, And I'm very clear we need investment to do that. We need to borrow to invest to do that. That's a principle yeah. I believe in and I'm absolutely happy to go out and defend. Um, and of course, what we've said as we got closer to the operationalization of this is that'll have to be ramped up. The money will have to be ramped up, the 28 billion, etc. And everything is, of course, subject to our fiscal rules.
Yeah, I think that's very clear. I mean, you've repeated that figure. I that's have said that a number asked, of times. That's what people have asked you to do, but others in your shadow cabinet haven't. I think that's the problem, isn't it? And, and I, the reason I say that is because we, we did also ask our focus group what they would like to ask you. And Tim said, are you going to be like every other politician and go back on your word? And I think that is one of the, the concerns. I think this is a very important question and challenge. The five missions I've set out are the what of what I want to change. The what, what is it that you want to change? Um, and why, of course. Mm -hmm. you know, people know why we need a, uh, an NHS that's fit for the future. People know why we need an economy that mm -hmm. actually works for working people yeah. across the country, not just some people in some parts of the country. Um, the question then is to work out how do you get there? That's the job of government. Um, and I'm a pragmatist. If I think, um, if I'm absolutely clear in my mind what it is I'm trying to achieve, which I am and have been, I think it's a really key feature of leadership, then um, and someone says there's a quicker, different, better way to get there, then be I'm happy. ears to that, of course. I, I, look, I came into politics later in life than mm -hmm. many others. I was previously ran the Crown Prosecution Service, I was the Chief Prosecutor, and I knew we had to reform, so I did the reform in the Crown Prosecution Service. The same challenges as I'll have if we get into government, and which is people it, saying, don't yeah. do it, we've always yeah. done it this way. Um, you know, why are you fixated on that change when you could have do it another yeah. way? So I've done all that, done it with the Labour Party, changed the Labour yeah. People said you're not, when I took over, most people said it is yeah. impossible to change the Labour Party uh, to be in a position mm -hmm. to win an election in four short years. We've done it, now we want the opportunity to do the same with the country, take our country to a mm -hmm. better place with the same mindset. We don't have a lot of time. I have a couple more questions for you. Um, I want to just, you just mentioned leadership and, and your character. I want to ask you something. You, you went to a school the other day and a group of teenagers asked you what would be the first thing you did if you were Prime Minister and you said, I would make clear that our behaviour matters. I thought it was a really interesting thing that you said. How does that fit with some of the language you've used in the comments and some of the things you've said about the Prime Minister, which actually, I think it's fair to say, they haven't been quite true. How do those two things fit together? Well, I, I think I um, was conveying to the children that mindset and behaviour really matter. Because but your behaviour in, in the Commons matters. And actually, well, some people have said, well, you, you've made a reputation as being a, a man who's very wedded to the truth and being yes. straight with people. Yes. But when you stand up in PMQs and you say things that aren't true... Well, give me an example. Well, I've got a couple of examples. You said that he was making... Rishi Sunak was making millions betting the misery of working people during the financial crisis. Well, you said he'd made a video for Nigel Farage, uh, well, which on, he I'm, hadn't... Hang on. You said no, he no, made a video, video for Nigel think, Farage. I think the thing about the um, mm -hmm. money that he made during the pandemic came from a Sunday Times story. Story? Was you actually said, the root cause of well, that? Well, and, and actually people have questioned whether or not it was well, accurate to say that he'd, he'd made it betting the misery of working people or whether he'd made it in, in, the, in a market, in a business environment, which you have said that Labour would encourage people to Well, look, people I just think to that totally money. misunderstands what people went through in the financial crisis. It was hell on earth for but working people the point who were about, going through complete I, and, measuring and, I and think the everybody, Prime Minister was making a lot of money. And I think everybody would agree. But the point about Nigel no. Farage's video, for example, you said that he'd made a video for Nigel Farage and he hadn't made a video for Nigel Farage. Um, my point more is about it, whether uh, or not it's, 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 you know, does it fit with your character? No, what I, I think it is worth you going back to Hansel actually mm -hmm. and seeing exactly what I did say about the video about Nigel Farage as well, because I worded it very carefully. But you worded it carefully because you knew you hadn't made it for no, Nigel Farage. I worded Farage. it carefully because I wanted it to be accurate. Um, but it is accurate. I'm sorry, working people in their millions went through hell in the financial crisis. They're going through hell again in the cost of living crisis. And I'm very happy to stand at the dispatch box and be mm -hmm. their champion and make yeah. that case. So you're happy to, I mean, you're happy to sort of indulge in a bit of that kind of back and forth. Because the Tories have, I mean, the Tories have accused you of working for a terror group. I mean, if it were me who had, had faced that, I would have been very frustrated about that accusation. Well, look, I'm very um, proud of my legal mm -hmm. record. I was a lawyer. I became a QC, obviously now KC. I then ran the Crown Prosecution Service. Yeah. I prosecuted more terrorists than Rishi Sunak has had helicopter it's rides. It's more and a that's point a about the rough and tumble, rides. isn't it? Because some people are put off by that. They, they find that just, they don't like that side of politics. They find it just deeply uncomfortable. Well, look, I mean, I want to go into this election making a big case about hope and change, about the five big yeah. things I want to change for this country. I think I'm going to be up against an opponent, uh, a, a Conservative Party, the, the Prime Minister, who can't go to the country on their record. They can't say, look, we've delivered all these brilliant things over 14 years, let us, you know, vote us back in to keep delivering. They couldn't do that with a straight face. Can't go to the country saying we've got great leadership mm -hmm. because they've burnt through five prime ministers and the change and chopping of changes is a you know, laughing stop across the world. 
Um, so they inevitably will go to, um, you know, culture wars and, and go low. I don't want to have the argument there, but what I will say is I'll fight fire with fire because this election is too important for me to back off. Yeah. So I'm very happy to have our positive argument, but I will absolutely be fighting fire <laughs> with fire because um, I have done everything I can to change this Labour Party in four short years and I've shown a ruthlessness and a determination to do so. That will be the same mindset to changing our country for the better so that I hope we can have an interview in four or five years' time and I can say to you... I hope it won't be that most, No, 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 but I can say to you, most of the change that you and others challenged me couldn't be done, yeah. we've actually um, done. It brings me to my final question. Right, are you ready for this one? I don't know. If you had to choose a football manager <laughs> that you were most like, who would it be and why? Oh, well, um, that's actually an easy one for me at the moment <laughs> because um, I feel an affinity with Arteta, um, the Arsenal manager, because what, again, if you look at his journey, he was appointed, it was hard to turn that Arsenal team around, to start with, people said he can't do it, there was talk about yeah. whether he should continue, and look what he's done now but with an incredible also, squad of players. Didn't he throw an eight-point lead away at the end? Well, the way, there is that, but look what he did <laughs> yesterday uh, against Liverpool. <laughs> Keir Starmer, thank you for your time. Thanks very much.